All right, welcome everyone. And I'm about to share my screen here. All right, um, wow, we're at 179 active members, which is amazing. Are there any new members on the call today that want to introduce themselves real quick? Please raise your hand. We've got Marco in area if you're not seeing their physical hands. Oh, there you go. Marco, <laughs> you're up first. Great to see you twice in one day, Max. Uh, this is Marco Santini, uh, new to the group, met Lou uh, at Paris Blockchain Week, had a really great conversation with him, and he told me about the groups. Since then, I've been doing a lot of learning and digging and just really enjoy what you guys are putting out there. I'm an NFT artist uh, based now in New Jersey after 15 years in New York City, and just Excited to uh, hear about the expertise uh, that this group has to offer. Yeah, I spoke to Marco earlier this morning for his onboarding call, and he's kind enough to actually present some of his work uh, at a collective call later in the month. So we're all definitely looking forward to that. I'm trying to get more artists in the space to come on these calls and present to the collective. So thank you, Marco, for that. Um, and Ariel, you're next. Hey everyone, well, thank you for having me. Uh, I, I'm from Paris. I met Lou in the Paris Blockchain Week. Uh, we got along very well. We like we have many, many things in common. And he uh, kindly invited me to this amazing group. <laughs> so I'm discovering and hopefully to add some value, ideas, and networking and contact. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here and happy to meet you guys. Welcome, Ariel. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. And, and the best thing about Lou traveling the world is that he brings um, a lot of new members with him and meets a lot of amazing people, and then they join us in these calls. So that is actually, I think, also how Christoph came to know about the Crypto Oracle Collective, and now he is going to present to us uh, about his company. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing and hand it off to Christoph. He we actually met Lou on the, in a Cannes Film Festival last year. See, that's so, what I mean. Around. Amazing. So let me share my screen. Really excited to present for today. Cool. Um, then I would say let's get started. Um, my name is Chris. I'm today presenting MC Squared Finance Token Strategies Worth Sharing, and we will discuss um, about an investment opportunities and what crypto is missing to actually onboard the next 100 million. Um, as you're all token and crypto experts, um, probably you now and then meet some person who asks you, but how actually should I invest in crypto? And um, probably no answer that you give them currently will be satisfying. You can recommend them centralized exchanges and um, immediately they will be exposed to the institutional risk that we very well saw unfolding through the last year. And also, um, or you can tell them, oh no, you have to make your own wallet because it has to be fully decentralized. But what chain do you recommend and what tokens resulting in no yields for um, the person and missing out a lot of opportunities. You can go, oh yeah, let's make a DeFi bot or other complex DeFi strategies. And then there is the, always the risk of hacks with continuously happening or also impediment loss through all the tradings. You could tell them, oh no, let's do crypto venture capital. But then actually you're again back in traditional finance structures of um, venture capital. And also you need to have access to the right. Or you can tell them, um, here are some great examples of decentralized exchanges or launchpads. Typically, they require uh, deep knowledge and a lot of learning efforts. And um, these decentralized exchanges are often very tough to navigate. They do not really offer a clear guidance of where to invest. The interface is super simple. And that's totally fine out of from the protocol side because they want to stay neutral. They want to stay fully decentralized and do not want to create centralized opinionated content again. But this results with no token content and no strategies in a very low user stickiness. That means users 
need to actually build their opinions somewhere else on other platforms and often on socials. So users will start going to crypto Twitter and saying, okay, where should I invest to? And after some time, they will learn most of it on crypto Twitter is about shilling. So maybe not so great. Then they will move to a crypto telegram and um, try to find the right groups. Where are like, do you find the right signals and try to teach their way up with the knowledge until they finally find a group that actually has good signals. But this is not the way how it should be. If you look into the numbers of tokens is rapidly glow, growing. Now on uh, CoinGecko, already more than 13,000 tokens are listed, and this will accelerate even faster through the next year. We will see that sooner or later, any asset class will become tradable on chain. And there are clear reasons why this trend is happening. We have on the blockchain uh, increased efficiency. We can have faster, if more efficient trading processes. We can have um, with due to reduced intermediaries. It's easier to automate clearing and settlement, and you can have immediate instant worldwide settlements, as well as improved transparency. That means as it's easier to verify, it's also easier to gain trust between any trading, trading partners around the world. And it results in a much higher capital efficiency than in traditional finance markets. By eliminating intermediaries, you can streamline process and can make part of it programmable through assets and contracts. And if we look into traditional finance, then people don't want to directly manage their stocks and the stock portfolio. Nobody actually wants to stay up to date. Who is now the CEO of my investments? Did they achieve the quarterly goals or not? Um, more than 50% in traditional finance invest indirectly into stocks through funds, through index funds or other types of products. But if you look into crypto, then more than 95% hold stocks directly currently. And we see there is a big misgap that we want to solve and why MC Square Finance will be needed. MC Square Finance will be a marketplace for all token trading strategies and even cross-chain. It is a white-label protocol to simply follow the best tokens, traders, institutions to learn from the content and benefit by following the strategies, even cross-chain. It basically is um, experts creating token strategies and users who can follow these strategies, learn from the content and earn by copying their trades. What users really want is an expert who manages the strategy, trusted content and independent audits verifying to further increase the trust into these strategies. And MCSCAD Finance does that in five very clear steps. First, we create a technology for non-custodial vaults for easy sharing and copying token strategies. Second, we don't want to compete with other protocols, we want to partner and cooperate. And therefore, we fully integrate into any DEX, wallet, and um, launchpad solutions. Then third, we enable advanced yield-bearing tokens into our strategies, um, and also enabling that our vault tokens can be used as collateral for, for example, lending protocols. Four, um, we believe that the experts should have their own voice and have exclusive clubs where they can share exclusive content and also exclusive strategies only for the followers. And five um, um, DAO rating agencies we have in the traditional finance, independent rating agencies we believe that's required in crypto as well. And so we will enable DAO rating agencies who can independently verify an expert, as well as creating small audit scripts that will be automatically executed by our engines every time the trader, the expert, 
does an adoption of the strategy. From the user side, the user should not need to care which chain he is on, which DEX he is on, or where the expert actually sits. For the user, it should be fully transparent and like easy to use. And that's why we also believe that users should be able to unlimitedly stack strategies above each other and mix strategies from each other's. For example, Bob has 50-50 BTC ETH. Jane says Bob does a great strategy, but rather she wants to be on an appreciative um, stablecoin token. And Anne, who says, oh, yeah, she likes what Chains is doing, but actually want to also put part of her capital into a more traditional investor who also provided strategies on our platform. What makes us so special? Um, we are web-free native, fully decentralized, non-custodial, and mostly open source. We're focusing on partnerships and integrations with DEXs and social traders, which means um, as we are fully white label able, we utilize all the reach of the partners. And with multi-chain and cross-chain, our experts can create a strategy on one chain, for example, on Ethereum trading on Uniswap, and a follower actually can follow the strategy on BSC trading on PancakeSwap. Um, we actually started this project only in January. It came out from our network requesting that something like this should exist and focused in the beginning on early partnerships and already achieved great traction with key partners like PancakeSwap, AidSwap, and Isumi, who has a lot of white labeling taxes on different chains. Um, chains are also super interested in our product because it helps them increase their trading volume. It helps them increase the total value locked, as well as creating engaging content that can be shared by their key opinion leaders. And we already have several key partners um, signed who want to provide trading strategies including market makers and including quantitative um, trading companies who for now only could trade on centralized exchanges. And we, for the first time, can give them the opportunity also to provide decentralized strategies. Our token has three core utilities. Um, first of all, it's a payment token for all the fees. Um, second, we provide with it also a proof of liquidity. It's a type of staking where half of the amount staked is converted into our um, highest quality vaults. And for getting access to the um, social clubs, you need to lock the MC Squared Finance tokens and therefore limiting the need for liquidity management for our traders and benefiting again our token um, for having it locked. Currently, what's on the market is there is on the one hand only in a centralized um, um, world, we always have the institutional risks and all of them are very isolated solutions. They don't want to work with anybody else in the ecosystem. If you look in a decentralized world, all of them are focusing on single chain solutions, which we see as a huge issue, and only on professionals. Um, and also they do not have any tech partners as well as um, focusing mostly on short-term trading so like what can you do inside of a transaction instead of focusing on long-term investment strategies yes our go-to market basically is focusing through um, the DEX partnerships that we already discussed and we see this as a huge market opportunity if you look into the DeFi index segment it's um we have about only 20 competitors in the segment and they already do about 930 million TVL um, last year, the all time high. Um, but actually, as we are focusing on a tax market, we see an opportunity to grow actually 100 times bigger. And basically now we are um, very early stage. We are now developing our first prototype and focusing on completing the angel round. And that's a brief overview about what we do with MC Squared Finance. And I'm very much looking forward for your discussions. Thanks, Krishna. Um, we're very excited about 
MC squared. And obviously the leadership team was great with Christoph. Um, uh, so I actually want to introduce, and he will lead the Q&A round, Sean, who's going to be the pr project manager on this account. Um, so Sean has a couple of questions of his own that he's going to ask Christoph, and then we'll hand it over to you guys. Please raise your hand um, if you want to ask a question. Um, and without further ado, here's Sean. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Max. Thank you, Christoph, for uh, an excellent overview of what you guys are building here. Um, I was curious, Christoph, just to start off, since you guys are uh, drawing resources from Crypto Oracle to help you guys out, what what sort of you you felt like your uh, primary goals were for the next six months and particularly like with how you can see talent from Crypto Oracle helping you? Like um, we see that MC Square Finance is a network solution for focusing on partnerships because um, the, the core technology for the first version is rather straightforward. It fully depends on what kind of partnerships and positioning we will get into the crypto world um, on what will be the success of the platform. In um, around June, we will launch our testnet MVP. In October, we want to launch the mainnet and then integrating into as many decks as possible. And we believe that with the network and the, the knowledge and the expertise of Crypto Oracle and its members, it can be a turnkey partner for us to become one of the dominant solutions. Like um, um, we, be, we see that, that trading strategies, like having good strategies will be one of the key elements for the next bull run. And so now positioning us as one of the leaders in the space um, through Crypto Oracle will give us the, the, the opportunity to kind of play in the big leagues. Yeah, totally. Um, and anyone raise your hands if you have any questions. I'm uh, looking for you here. So um, uh, you, you guys have uh, talked about making a multi-chain strategy here. And I was wondering, I, I guess... Uh, in in some ways, for the past few uh, the past few months, there hasn't really seemed to be that much money coming into DeFi, and I was wondering since you guys were targeting perhaps uh, people that were potentially new to DeFi, potentially uh, interested in making their strategy but didn't want to sort of create their own strategy, how you've thought about sort of targeting the that money. Like the, we want to increase the the usability of existing infrastructure, especially like taxes, J um, wallets, and launchpads. We believe that they are not easy to use, and therefore um, you need to be very dedicated to learn enough about crypto to finally having good strategies for yourself. And our solution drastically simplifies that because you can rely on experts for it. And um, so by improving how existing market players um, can work and can work with their audience, we believe we drastically improve their adoption rate, their user retention rate, and therefore, in the end, their TBL. So less users lost, easier onboarding means um, a way to increase the crypto ecosystem, especially in preparation for the next bull run. Yeah, no, that that makes sense to me. Um, sort of getting in people's way uh, before um, before the actual demand is there, so that you you're well positioned for everything. Um, yeah, anybody else have any questions? Uh, I can ask a question. Before yeah, we thank go you, to, uh, Sir Landina. Um, yeah, so I am an NFT DGen but I am definitely not smart enough to be a DeFi degen. So I copy trade Johnny and I guess Sean mostly. Um, so for somebody, you know, who is, sees a lot of stuff going on in the DeFi space, um, there's definitely a lot of stuff with, you know, different hacks and security issues with protocols. 
if I am using one of your copy trading strategies um, and it kind of gets me into the way of one of these hacks is, you know, what is kind of like the solution for that that you see for your protocol? Um, is it only working with really reliable sources or is there something else? So like um, the, the core thing is we want to have expert managed strategies. And these experts um, will have a reputation attached. So depending of what type they're trading, how active they are, and especially how the consistency of returns is on the strategy, they will be um, evaluated on the platform. That means if you invest into highly um, illiquid assets or in very risky assets, then you basically get a lower reputation, therefore lower visibility, and you get kind of um, a warning hashtag on the website um, when you invest in them. So um, building reputation will be a, a key activity on the platform, and therefore it should show you which is, are the more safe strategies to invest. But for sure, it means if you want, you can invest in more unsafe, more riskier strategies if that's what you like. You just have to do more due diligence for yourself. Protecting against hacks is a total other topic. Like our engine can follow strategies, but doesn't need to follow strategies. If the expert makes trades which are just unreasonable, for example, the liquidity is just not there for the amount that is following the strategy, or um, the asset is too risky or it's a, um, a risky contract. And basically, the pool will not follow the expert. There will be an error generated. It will be like a warning sent out to the trader. And if it doesn't directly react to all the followers, saying that this strategy has basically stopped due to um, a risk that was identified by the engine. Very cool. Awesome. Cool, Cyril. Uh, do you want to ask a question? Uh, well, yes, please. Uh, so I'm I'm from Geneva, uh, Switzerland. Um, I have three questions for you guys. Um, the first one um, will be: um, What exactly is your business model here? Can you tell me maybe a little about it? Mm -hmm. Um. So the. The key thing is, if you look into traditional finance, into wealth management, you have um, deposit fees um, up to 2%. Um, you have um, uh, success fees, like on the withdrawal, um, which typically is between 10 and 20% of the profits. And then you have a service fee throughout the year that is around typically 2% um, that you have to pay. Um, our vaults have the first two, which means deposit and withdrawal fees, for sure much lower than in traditional finance. Um, and they go into the treasury of the DAO, um, as well as um, the, uh, the social clubs for the traders, they will have, which is called a bonding curve. Um, so it's a little bit more complex from the tokenomics, but we earn from there as well. The more users basically are part of the um, social clubs. Um, and third, with the um, audits, for sure, we can have also additional revenues there. But basically, it means the more users using the protocol, the more fees are generated from it and turned into the treasury of the protocol itself. Thank you very much. That's, I think, very interesting. It's, it's, it's quite different from other liquidity pool uh, mechanism, I think. You're much more decentralized in your business model. Um, so I had an, yes. another. An, That's the key. Right? It's, it's current solutions are very centralized, and we believe it's a fully decentralized, non custodial solution needed to kind of push the ecosystem forward. So, so my second question is about um, um, MEV, minor extracted value. Um, and so today, you don't know if you guys, if people here have heard the news. Uh, so someone act uh, five MEV bots uh, for something like 20 millions. Um, there was some kind of sandwich between two transactions, because it's quite, quite small move. So do you have some mechanism to protect some uh, users from MEV or similar um, 
adversarial um, yes. behaviors? Like, for sure, be protected against slippage, um, which is kind of easy for that. And second thing is um, our solution is not focused on short-term high-frequency trading, where MEV is a big issue. We rather focus on long-term wealth management strategies, where we also see in the traditional world the big funds happening. So um, if the followers have, let's say, a 0.5% difference then from actually what the trader was doing, it's not an issue if you look into the long term. If you look into the short term, this basically can kill all the profits. But in the long term, this is not the, the key issue that presents yourself. And that's kind of one of the key things where we believe that long term value driven strategies are what will drive the, the wealth in the future like finding the actual tokens which produce value instead of trying to extract from trades another 0.1%. Very interesting. Thank you very much. So I have just a last, um, uh, not really, a, not even question before I give them, um, uh, let, let the Dina or Johnny uh, ask the question. Do you know the project Swissborg? I find um, some similarity with what you're trying to achieve. Like um, we, we have the, the key thing is we want to make long term strategies. We see a lot of protocols which kind of make one program strategy. We make maybe an AI bot or make an, an index which is like specially structured. Um, and we would love to partner with all of them to provide strategies for us. Because that's what they basically doing. They make oh, one, two, like maybe five strategies. And we want to be the platform where all of these strategies have a standardized way of uh, investing through all the taxes and exposure through all the taxes. Because the best ones should be visible to the most users. And so we love all of you to talk with them to see how we can enable their strategies to be also visible on our platform. So let's connect um, outside this meeting if you if if we can network. And thank you very much for the answers. Great, uh, Dina, did you have a question or, yeah, or comments? I, yes, I I, I do. Um, great presentation. I really enjoyed it. I think uh, you know you started out by saying you're trying to make it user friendly, and your presentation um, is user friendly for someone like me. Um, I appreciate it. My question is, obviously, your goal is to be able to do this around the world. Um, what are what are you thinking in terms of uh, the US, which has had a, um, well, sort of a, a lot of bizarreness in terms of our regulation? Yes, um, it's a very good question. Um, actually, a lot of competitors have a big challenge in that, um, but it's how they structure the, the the creation of the walls. We have a very special way, um, which already we have verified with European as well as with US lawyers, um, that we do not incur any liability for the trader nor the follower. That means it's no problem to use our strategies also from the US. Um, the core concept, to put it very, very simply, there's a lot of more complexity behind, is that um, if you follow a wallet um, and then the wallet does a bad trade, you cannot sue the wallet and saying, oh yeah, you did a bad trade. Now you have to reimburse my funds as well. Um, so um, that way everybody can follow wallets. And so nobody can actually put any legal limitations on that. If I can, just, if I can help at all, I know sort of a little bit of everything. Um, in the financial services ecosystem in the U.S., it's my expertise. If I can help um, at all, please let me know. Like I'm, I'm, we, 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 there is a lot of things, um, especially in that space, and we will need a lot of feedback and, and challenging especially. We love very tough challenging of our concepts because it's rather new. And so I'm uh, very much appreciate that and love for, to talk more in detail about it. Yeah, I'm happy to do that whenever you're you know available. I'll put my email address in the chat if that helps. Great, thanks. Uh, Johnny? 
Hey, uh, my question was around the um, the market makers that you mentioned. Uh, where do they plug into this, and and how do they plan on using this uh, once it goes live? Um, the as beside of for sure, like token liquidity, which is always important. Um, our key goal with partnerships with them is that they actually provide strategies. Market makers have a unique insight into protocols, into tokens, and into where the market is heading. And uh, we want to get them to actually make strategies. So um, the, the goal is that, that you can follow the best brands into in the crypto ecosystem and that they actually manage strategies um, for the users. And so far, we had a very good feedback. We already have early agreements um, with some market makers, and we want to extend that further to basically anybody who is trading in the space. Cool, thanks. Uh, great, Alan. Hi, Christoph. Uh... A little bit more detail maybe on how the expert portion of this works. Are, are your experts compensated or do you have a team who are following individual export, experts in the industry? And if so, how big of a team do you think that would be? Or are you using plan on using AI or something? So um, the experts, it's it's... The simple thing, it's a marketplace. So we don't want to be the experts, but we want to incentivize experts to provide as much strategies and as many strategies as possible. Um, and we will reward them for the content that they provide. Um, and so there is a rather complex tokenomics scheme to make sure that um, the experts with the most interesting content um, gets also most of the rewards from the platform. Um, and therefore, we basically are onboarding a lot of experts on the way, as well as, um, as we have exposure through a lot of taxes. Um, a lot of them are also interested with providing strategies with increasing the followers. And so if you provide good strategies, you get visibility in the main DEXs and therefore you also your social accounts get a lot of more following. And so you can grow your business directly as well as indirectly. Okay. And what if there are conflicts between the experts, different, different opinions on particular sectors or investments? How are those recommended? I mean, the, the content itself is dependent on the strategy. So we can have two strategies which are totally opposite from each other. And it's no pro problem for the platform itself. Both of them have a reputation. And so you can have different strategies with different sets of reputations. And probably the one who is right in the end will gain reputation, while the one who is wrong in the end will lose reputation. And that also kind of through the long term makes sure that the ones who really understand the market are floating on top. Very opposite to what you, for example, see on crypto Twitter, where only the ones which advertise a new token every day will be on top. And the ones who actually have a strategy um, cannot produce enough content to stay relevant. Thank you. Sounds really interesting. Thank you. Mel. Hi. Hey. Um, <clears throat> great, great presentation. Um, and I think I, uh, whew, I, I, this is only my second session. And um, I come from uh, a, a DeFi DAO that builds uh, vaults, decentralized rebalancing. Um, and uh, so um, it was called the Index Cooperative. And I guess, so the, the questions I have might be like kind of technical, but it goes to, I'd really like to be able to talk about this in a in a way that I have a little bit of confidence behind. Um, <clears throat> is the vault architecture more of like a balancer implementation or more like set protocol? Um, it's, we tend more to like a balancer implementation. Um, so so but if one we, token gets rugged, they all get rugged? No, no, no. Like it's it's so every every strategy has their own vault. 
That's right. Kind so of what within one strategy, on. though, if I'm if I create create a strategy and it has seven tokens in it, if one gets rugged, do the other six get rugged? Uh, no, because like the other six don't lose the value. Right. Okay. So that's like a set protocol implementation. Like if one goes, they all go in a balancer pool. But if, if, uh, okay. So, okay. That's good in my opinion. Um, and then decentralized rebalancing. Every, every strategy has their own token. So that means that if you have, uh, the like male strategy on Ethereum, it has a male Ethereum strategy token. If somebody um, creates it, then on BSC, it has a male BSC strategy token and has a fully separated vault, um, which manage the same strategy, but on different chains. That's really cool. Um, so that actually sounds a lot like Scalera, um, which uh, that's like, a, I think that's like a Scott Lewis DeFi Pulse deal. Um, but they do, uh, the way they do it is um, through decentralized rebalancing is like an auction mechanism. Um, where you post a bit of a bond and then you have like 24 hours to go like rebalance that vault, which is, it can be cross chain. It's really, uh, it's really kind of nuanced. Um, and I guess that was, that was kind of like the last question I had is like, how are you achieving the rebals? Because liquidity is the currency of the realm. And you mentioned it kicks an error. So it's like, how on chain is it? Because that's where you're, in my opinion, like any copy strategy is going to just like break a lot at, at that point. So like, what's the, I guess, what's the mechanism you use to trigger that? Like for, for liquidity, we have, um, let's say we have an expert on a main chain, but we have a follower on a niche chain. Then for sure, you always run into liquidity problems. We have several solutions to combat that. The most, the easiest one actually is to bridge the um, strategy token. So the strategy actually gets execute, executed of one of the main chains. Um, while we just bridge the ownership of the token um, to the side chain. Um, but this kind of doesn't help the side chain a lot. Um, so we typically rather try to have as much traded on the side chain to, to support the protocols there. And that would mean that we would split the strategy and need to understand which of the um, tokens we can actually trade on the side chain versus which of the tokens we have to bridge through it. And this is kind of one of the research things that will be very interesting to understand um, economic viability and also cross-chain protocols. And um, we see there's a lot of development happening in the next six to nine months in, in cross-chain swapping. And um, the really nice thing is as we're building on top of it, we don't want to implement the liquidity. We do not provide liquidity itself. We build on top of what's existing. We can always build on the latest technology that is developing. So we can through time also adapt and improve actually liquidity strategies on different chains. I got to say index strategies, uh, you're in the great game now. Um, so good luck. <laughs> this is, this sounds like one of the better ones. So great presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions or, or thoughts for Christoph? Uh, David? Hey guys, a couple of things here. Um, yeah, I want to test it out. I obviously I'm for those that don't, I trade daily. So um want to test this out. The email hello at mc2.fi does not work. Um and I did apply on your website already officially to be involved. <laughs> Um, what was the second one again? The email should be fixed already. I looked into it. It should right. work now. Okay. What was the second point? No, no, I applied on your website already. So looking okay. forward to, to working. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I run different trading communities here in New York City. Very cool. Great. So anyone else? Um. So... As oh Kyle, yes. Kyle, I, you're you're muted. Great. Uh, we still can't hear you. Kyle, you are not muted, but we cannot hear you. Otherwise, you can write the question and. Oh. Am I audio? 
Yeah. Now he hears something. Yeah, okay. just barely though. Something happens with the AirPods this time. Um, catch my train of thought here. Um, well, first, yeah, this seems like a really cool project. Um, as somebody who's not really a trader, this could be really useful. And I guess my main question or my main query is, you, know, you had mentioned working with projects like PancakeSwap and ApeSwap, and, which are longtime BNB chain uh, projects. And I guess, what what do you see is like the potential for DeFi on, on that chain? Is that something you've kind of just been watching? Um, because as somebody who's been a long time user of BNB chain, it just seems like it's it's super active, but there's to totally not a lot of money on it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just interested to hear maybe what, what your relationship might be with those teams, um, how those conversations have gone and kind of what they foresee um, your project being able to help them with. Like fast for sure, it's interesting to work with chains which have a lot of user traction and, um, and the BSC chain shows um, a lot of user activity, mainly because of the driver of Binance. Um, and that still will be the main driver also for the next two years, like centralized exchanges will be the centerpiece for onboarding new users also in the next two years. I do not see that this is changing very fast. And therefore, chains which have like close relationships with them are very easy to onboard kind of newcomers into crypto. Um, and that also is the reason why now the activity is very low because there is not so much onboarding in the bear market happening. Um, and we believe that this is will be very drastically changed for the next um, um, bull run. On the other hand, um, that's one of the key things why we want to be cross-chain from the beginning. And we believe that cross-chain activities will be the future um, because what we see now is the specialization of chains. Like um, through the last um, bull run, it was general purpose chains, which kind of optimized in a general purpose um, blockchain technology. In the next bull run, we will see that there will be a lot of um, special purpose chains, which focusing on a single activity, for example, trading, for example, gaming, um, and they will be very successful. They will have their own on ramps. They will have their own ecosystem, but still they should be connected to all the other ecosystems. And so for us, it's easy to start with EVM based chains and with EVM based chains with a lot of users. That's why BSC is one of our top chains, um, as well as like AVEX and um, uh, Arbitrum, which are very interesting to work with. We see on Ethereum, there is still a lot of um, um, too high fees for, for, for very efficiently run such strategies. So that's why even we will deploy there, it's not one of our primary chains. Um, um, but our goal is to beat on as many chains as possible. And we already have several discussions with chains also like in Cosmos and with uh, the Move ecosystem to see how we can bring it there as well. Great, awesome. So um, as Max mentioned, uh, uh, MC Squared Phi is uh, using the collective to help them with some pre-launch early launch stuff um and if you want to help on this project please 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 do not hesitate to contact me and we can have a discussion um initial things that we've sort of identified as uh things that the collective can do so broadly the most important thing that the collective can do to help mc squared is by um helping them develop uh, partnerships, particularly with uh, larger other DeFi protocols in the space, uh, major and actually minor wallets um, and chains to help them perhaps apply for grants or to help cover some of the development costs that are needed to do this sort of massive uh, multi-chain um, venture um we're also looking for help uh sort of solidifying their branding and helping them create a brand deck um uh some perhaps some help with 
technical writing, both in solidifying their white paper and uh, in terms of uh, writing some of these grants for, for chain money and uh, uh, some some general strategy for very, very, very early initial marketing stuff around uh, plans for Twitter spaces, conferences. The In, in my mind, the, the major marketing push will happen a few months from now, but uh, it's, it's a good idea to start planning. So if, if you want to help with any of that stuff, particularly with sort of helping them create partnerships and making those warm introductions, please contact me. And if you have any other ideas on how we can help them uh, become a, a DeFi juggernaut in the space uh, also, um, please contact me. And I'll, I'll, I'll put a message in the Telegram group uh, to that effect as well. Um, but yeah, um, Christoph do you, and Max, do you have, do you guys have, and uh, um, uh, also, Maureen, do you guys have anything uh, you all want to add to that? Yeah, I forgot to mention Maureen is Christoph's partner in this and um, also very smart and very knowledgeable in the DeFi space. So um, them leading this effort, I'm pretty sure it's going to be successful and with Sean's help as well. Um, but the collective is very lucky to have such great members that bring these projects to our attention. And then obviously all the collective members get the benefit. from. Um, so we're super excited that this deal is gonna you know, go through and we're gonna get started on this project imminently. Um, Maybe yeah. one, one not uh, also very important point is um, we are closing the angel round um, rather soon. And so if you're interested also in taking part of that, then you should contact us pretty fast before all the education is gone. Awesome. Um, all right, great. Thanks, Christoph. Uh, very much appreciate the presentation. And thanks, Sean, for handling the q and I I thought it would be good since you are the project manager on this account. Um, great. So I'm just gonna share my screen real quick um, and kind of go through the stuff that we still have ongoing. Um, operational updates on Telegram. If you're not in our Telegram group yet, please contact Lily or I and we will get you added. Um, Operation Chokehold 2.0, I will put this in here. It's, political thing that I don't want to comment on. Um, it's more for him to speak about, but uh, I can talk about NFT Miami, which we did already, which was great. Uh, thanks to Julie, NFT NYC coming up next week. So I'm looking forward to seeing everybody in New York, all your beautiful faces. Um, today's guest speaker we already had. Um, on Wednesday, we will have Jim Borger from uh, Web3Sense, which is a really cool data company providing data insights to NFT and DeFi platforms. Um, and then on Friday, we have Trevor Owens, who is the managing partner for Bitcoin Frontier Fund. Um, we don't get too many Bitcoin speakers, so it's going to be interesting to see what kind of stuff they're investing in. Um, all right, we have six minutes left. I'm going to open it up to the audience. Anybody want to talk about anything? Elise, what's up? Hey, um, did you figure out how to make a subcategory inside of our Telegram group so we can have like a separate NFT chat? NYC, right. I'm going to do it right now. And you're going to be my first invite. Woohoo! Thanks for the reminder. I totally forgot with, with NFT Miami at the last week. Of course. Cool, thanks. Yep. Anybody who wants to be added to the uh, NFT NYC Telegram group, please uh, drop me a line. Anything else, guys? All right. Um, oh, maybe one maybe thing. one thing. Yeah. Who will go to consensus last in the end of the month? Is there any plans for that? Yeah, Lou will definitely be there. Um, that I know. But and there's I a Crypto Monday that's been announced. Yeah, yep, there will be a Crypto Mondays in Austin um, as well. So you should get there before that because that's going to be a lot of fun. 
Um, I think there's a ton of people going from the from the clock deck. Um, I will not be going because I want to stay married. Um, and I've been doing way too much travel and all that. Um, but there's definitely a big contingent of uh, of people that will be there. I'm uh, I have a three for one deal, so I might have an extra ticket from that. This is Andy. Awesome. Cool. Anyone else have anything for this fine Crypto Mondays? Ivan, are you doing a, a, a group a meetup today? No, I had plenty the last three days. Um, next week. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Um, we have three more minutes, but I guess I'll close it out early and let everybody grab a cup of coffee, which is what I'm going to do before um, I talk to Julie to discuss her super secret plans for NFT NYC. Um, all right, guys. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much for Christoph and Maureen for presenting their amazing company. Yeah. Thanks, Sean, for handling the questions. And thanks to the audience again. I think the, the Q&A was really, really fascinating for somebody like me who's not very deep into the DeFi space, but I will, I will get deeper into it, I promise. Um, all right, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah. Okay.